What's up guys, welcome back to Indigo Gaming. Today's video, we're gonna be going uh, over the Halo Waypoint update for the Halo Infinite, um, you know, craziness that's about to happen with the flights. So first off guys, if you, are, if you already don't, don't know, we will be having uh, two flights back to back. We'll be having one this weekend, and then we'll be having one the following weekend. I wanted to go ahead and uh, briefly go through this though. Um, I have not been through this. So we'll just quickly go through some of the big stuff that I see on here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna end up releasing this tonight or tomorrow, we will see. I've been having a packed day, so I haven't been able to really uh, get some good uh, some good reading time in. But first, it looks like we will be having the big team battle. We kind of already talked about this before, but that's the first thing on here saying we're crafting the next chapter of Halo multiplayer. No stone can be unturned, digital, physical, or otherwise. We're talking about the last thing. We have heard some initial thoughts when they wanted to accomplish this Halo free to play experience. Okay, now with big team battle on the menu for upcoming uh, multiplayer tech preview, we want to take another opportunity to sit down with them. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So they're going to be, um, we'll definitely have a emphasis on the big team battle, which is cool, which is cool. And it looks like um, everybody kind of is talking about um, some of the, I guess, issues, maps, and uh, main problems. I may have to do maybe like a part two, actually doing like a full breakdown. Kind of just want to go over some of the highlights that we'll probably end up seeing in the flight. So it looks like, yeah, we will be seeing a uh, big team battle. It looks like they're also going to be focusing or emphasizing um, like the maps, the modes in the academy, as well as the bots to make sure that, you know, the game is continually evolving, at least the sandbox. Um, how often do you work with the live team in your process? Okay, when approaching Halo with some of your most crucial design pillars, Okay, okay, I'm intrigued to see this. So it looks like uh, for this guy, Andrew, embracing the Spartan battle fantasy, we want players to really feel like they are within a Spartan, they are within a Spartan unit pushing through the battlefield and capturing objectives as a team. Okay, that's why I invest in things like Pelican Drops, Commander Mode, okay, Commander Mode uh, voiceover, uh, weapon pods, falling from the sky to, re to resupply the field, and a few more dynamic elements. Okay, okay, empower players to player empower player types to thrive. There are many different types of players in the Halo ecosystem. Some players are pilots, others are slayers or objective hunters. But we want all of them to work together in this big team battle experience. Fernando has a fantastic uh, phrase that sums up the pillar. Uh, well, make sure everyone can feel like a hero in any match. I like this. I like this empowerment. Uh, for each type of player, I know for me, for, for myself personally, I might not be like the best pilot, but I am definitely one of the uh, more focused on getting kills, but also objectives. I can I can definitely play objectives as well, so that's cool. Um, I know some of my friends who are better at just piloting or maybe just you know being a sniper, so that's cool there. I definitely like that. Um, unleash the Halo Infinite sandbox. The pillar speaks for itself. We want okay okay. So they wanted to emphasize that big and big team battle. With not just the number of players in the match or the size of the map, but the number of options at player's disposal. All the toys are available in the space for maximum fun. I like this. I like this. I like this. I like this a lot. Again, and not just like the um, bigness in terms of the amount of players or just the big size, but just giving you guys a lot of options. So hopefully that means we're going to have, you know, some fun ground vehicles air vehicles and different types of weapons that can play on this you know cool snipers cool maybe rocket launchers um in perfect places you know the the uh, supply drops coming in at different places as well um i feel like there's a lot of variety we can have in this for sure especially with the equipment as well so i'm liking that i'm liking that i want to see him set up to design the new how do you approach drawing inspiration? Okay, okay. As you set out to evolve, what aspects uh, did you specifically see as areas to improve upon and make new? All right, we were really big fans of the legacy. Yeah, I think a lot of people are fans of the uh, old, uh, you know, big team battle. We wanted a a big team battle experience that feels classic and modern at the team. At the, okay, at the same time, classic was to make sure that the mode rules and balance. Consider the increased player count and amazing new maps. This allows us to create an exciting uh, pace throughout the 
throughout a big team match, which combined with the awesome new toys in our sandbox makes a perfect stage so players can play out memorable moments with their friends. Okay, okay. And uh, Patrick, he's talking about we took a uh, similar philosophy and how we approached big team battles we did with Arena, but turned it up to 11. There is the core experience of spawning at your base, jumping into vehicles, and going out into the world, but we looked at how we could spice it up. Tanks, for example, especially the Scorpion, are extremely powerful vehicles that would tend to dominate matches in previous Halo games. We looked at how we can make them an amazing moment in a match that really, okay, punctuates their power. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, oh, look at this, too. The different, like the flags. And it has uh, flag taken, flag drop, flag taken. Cool, cool, cool. I like that. So I'm, I'm assuming the, the, uh, the sign may change, I guess, when you pick it up. How did the team arrive at the design for expanded 12 versus 12? Yeah, yeah, I'm intrigued to see this. Uh, let's go to this too. Uh, the short answer for me is that we wanted this to feel like a bigger big team experience. And adding four players to each team seemed like a natural path to iterate towards more players, mean more player interactions would be felt was a net positive to a lot of the strengths of big team battle. I agree. I agree. I mean, it's 2021 now. Let's just see, you know, some even bigger matches. And yeah, Fernando, the more the merrier. We found 12 with 12 uh, player count maintains the classic pacing that we all love while increasing the possibility for fun player engagements. And uh, Patrick uh, Wren, having worked in Halo 5 Warzone, it was important for me that we didn't go smaller than that. Yeah, there's a lot of learning we could bring forward to create a bigger battle for players in big team battle. Uh, it would feel weird if we lowered our player uh, count back after that. Yeah, that would be. That would be. What types of new design challenges come with increasing the player count by 50%? And how did the team ch attack those challenges? I think one of the biggest challenges have uh, been around the game. Okay, more pacing. What I mean by pacing is the feeling of escalation or urgency in a match. Ideally, you will want to start a match with excitement over time that turns to increased tension so that as a match... Uh, you feel fulfilled, jubilant as a player when the conclusion is reached and uh, one team is victorious. Okay, yeah, I'm saying that pacing can definitely be a big challenge when you increase the number of players, a lot of the stress. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, I mean, like like a lot of it kind of makes sense. Um, you know, just I'm not even a game designer, but it does make sense. We're considering Halo Infinite's map with uh, the approach from a design standpoint. Okay, and... Oh, we got a new weapon, it looks like. I thought that was the brew shot, but looks like it's something kind of new. Kind of new at the same time. Definitely brute made, at least from this bottom part of this. I might make a whole video on talking about some of these weapons on this game. They do look freaking nice. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and let's see. Ground being multiplayer. Oh yeah, yeah. This yeah, this one we gotta read. We definitely gotta read this part. How does Halo Infinite's new equipment factor into big team battle? Similar to how Arena is structured, there are equipment spawned all around the big team maps. The biggest difference in big team battle is the amount of equipment charges that you receive per pick. When you pick up equipment in big team battle, up to five uses depending on the specific piece of equipment. The reason we made the change is because we felt that increasing the frequency of the equipment verbs, players would be able to see more systematic outcomes on the sandbox more often. We feel like it's tied very well to our sandbox unleash design pillar and our play tests have been validating this design choice. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so that is cool, that is cool. So depending on the mode you'll have, um, you know, possibly have more charges in your equipment this is something I assume they were going to be doing for single player as well. I'm pretty sure when you play a single player, I'm pretty sure you're not going to have just like, you know, you can only use your grapple hook like three or four times. I'm pretty sure you can probably continuously use it or maybe, maybe use it 10 times or so on single player. So it's cool that also in uh, different, different uh, multiplayer maps or different multiplayer modes that they'll increase or decrease it, you know, you know, just, you know, just keeping the, um, keeping the battle, Keeping everything in line. I'm, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. And let's see. Grounding multiplayer and big big team battle in particular. More in the friction. Okay, we're talking about big team battle. Big team isn't just more players. All just features from new modes and mechanics. Okay, okay. I'm intrigued. Let's see. We designed Halo Infinite's big team mode uh, from the ground up to encourage teamwork and support different player archetypes. Okay, we kind of, they kind of briefly touched on this earlier. Whether you are in an incredible sniper, okay, I just talked about that, a skillful warhog driver or a stealthy flag runner, you can contribute meaningfully 
and the outcome of any match across both classic modes like Capture the Flag and Slayer and brand new modes like Total Control, I'm intrigued, and uh, yeah, the big team battle experiences should feel fresh and iconic at the same time. So yeah, it looks like they're definitely emphasizing this big team battle and making it feel cohesive for all different types of archetypes. And looks like we got some more um, info now about the inclusion of iconic vehicles. Okay, both ground and air having this mode. This is where Halo vehicles shine. We looked at vehicles and big team battle in a few different ways. First was the combo of map and vehicles that are always there. When players spawn into a map, they will always have a place to go hop in a vehicle, just like always. Cool, cool, cool. I like this. So we don't have to. It looks like we don't have to worry about always having all of our vehicles and all our weapons are dropping down. We will have some standard vehicles already on the map. Cool. We also wanted to escalate the experience over time. As players can drop in vehicles, they will all they will at first start dropping in your standard ground vehicles. But as the match goes on, they will start dropping even oh in more powerful vehicles, air vehicles, and eventually tanks. We wanted more powerful vehicles in the sandbox to really feel special and create a moment in the game that continues to flow depending on what vehicle is brought in. This is cool. This is cool. So it looks like we will be getting dynamic. Uh, and like, I mean, like more of a sense of like dynamic um, uh, vehicles coming to the game. This is cool. This is cool. I like this a lot. Um, so it looks like, you know, you'll be able to, you know, play against a play against your opponents. And first off, you know, you're having like your Warhawks and your ghosts. And then the next thing you know, you may get one of those brute choppers in there. And then before long, five, six, seven, eight minutes in, you know, you're grinding, the tension is kind of high, tank drops down. Some banshees, some old banshees drop down. Some other cool <laughs> aircraft drop down. <laughs> oh man, now the tension is like times a million. That's that's cool. That's cool. I like I'm liking that. I'm liking that a lot. What's your personal uh favorite big team battle member from the Halo franchise? Okay, they're talking about their uh history with that. Okay, pencils down, M40s up, Halo's 20 year history span generation console like Parents Alive Academy. The team knew they, okay. What are the goals and design pillars for the Academy? Okay, with Infinite multiplayer being free, the Academy was born out of necessity, support of an evergreen place for new players to join and fight. And it uh, looks like the um, premise for the pillars they're looking for for uh, the Academy is giving players ways to learn about maps and systems without the fear of being shot in the face by players. I do like this, and I'm pretty sure a lot of pro players are going to be using this as well, allowing themselves to have a good idea of the whole maps, um, weapon placements, etc. I know that's something I'm going to definitely have to get into as well. You know, just so I'm a head of the competition. Another pillar that they're uh, focusing on is uh, providing players tools to learn core mechanics and provide pathways to mastery through crafted fun, replayable by size experiences cool stuff there cool stuff there and give context for the multiplayer spartan within the greater halo canon okay okay that's what's up when building an academy experience that uh, met the goals above how did the team arrive at the three experiences tutorial weapon drills and training mode okay so kind of just gave in a backstory on that Okay, we've only mentioned the Academy tutorial briefly in multiplayer overview. What can players expect after checking out at launch? The tutorial is a unique linear mission where players are introduced to the Spartan Commander Lorette and explore the grounds of the Avery uh, Johnson Academy of Military Science. Here you complete a series of objectives to help acclimate uh, players of all skills in the world of Halo Infinite. We want players to come away from the tutorial with a greater sense for what it means to be a Spartan in the Halo universe and how they can be an example for the rest of humanity. Cool, 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 cool. Definitely liking that. Uh, training mode is an, is an academy offering the players. We'll get an experience in the upcoming multiplayer tech preview. Uh, we're well, talking about, okay, okay. So it's just more um, academy stuff and I guess the backgrounds and what people, you know, kind of thought about it when they were uh, creating this for us. Currently, Academy is a, is a lone wolf experience. Has the team considered a way to expand into multiplayer experience, perhaps in the future? That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, let's see what David says. Yes, we decided to focus on lone wolf for launch for a variety of reasons. We wanted to account for players who are aware we're playing with and against other people. And so we were able to focus on solo offline experiences mainly as a priority. Okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. 
especially with all the uh, tech stuff going on uh, with the game and, uh, you know, the delays on Forge and the delay on co-op um, from for single player or I guess for the campaign. I'm glad that they're not trying to add in that for the Academy for now. Just keep that like it is. We don't need to add in the extra stuff right now. And now it looks like we'll, um, okay, we'll, let's just go over the, uh, I'm assuming this is going to be the last part of the progression challenges and customization. Uh, launch Halo Infinite will feature one primary progression path for players, which is tied to the seasonal uh, battle pass. Okay, it looks, they say at launch will feature only one. So it looks like we will be getting other ones. Um, the pass, which include avenues, yep, unlocking XP, in addition to the primary battle pass for each season, Halo Infinite will also offer special limited time event passes. The free special pass are only available during specific event periods and often tied to a unique armor core for a given event. Okay, so during this time, it will be available from one to multiple weeks. Huh. The marquee event, though not the only event for season one, is a franchise Tenra event, which is now players will obtain and during their uh, samurai. Okay, uh, we have community feedback around more progression options, including things like match XP. Yes, this is something people and myself included will like. I, I want match XP. So me playing a match, me playing the objective, I should be able to get some points uh, to feed into the battle pass, an entirely separate incremental system along the lines of earning. SR-152 and Halo uh, 5 Guardian, expanding multiplayer progression, offering something the team is actively exploring, and we look forward to continuing to evolve the experience. Okay, so they haven't um, gave us an answer exactly if they're going to actually do that, add in the XP uh, or not, but looks like at launch, we, it will be tied just to the battle pass. But something that was intriguing are these, like, uh, these, these limited event passes. Will we also be able to go back and, and you know un, like unlock these passes so we can still unlock these armors or all this only going to be for a limited time because i thought the whole point for these battle passes was something that you know if you come in late uh you can always just go back to some of the previous battle passes if you like that armor or like those armors or customization options and then you can play at your leisure like you're not always focused on having to log in every day or every week or every month you know, you can come in later and you can still have full reign of all your battle passes. I'm intrigued to see these special limited, limited, of uh, like a limited time or a special passes. Will we also be able to play those or will it only be for those, you know, specific times? Because that would kind of suck too. Because I thought that was a whole point for the battle pass that, uh, for, at least for this game, that you could, you know, that you could go, you know, you could go back and uh play it whenever you didn't have to worry about you know that time restraint Cause a lot of people got a lot of stuff going on in their lives and for challenges that mean by which player will progress through their seasonal battle pass unlock new items okay you see you earn the uh complete challenges challenges will come in two different flavors weekly and daily okay weekly challenges are usually more directed and specific while offering more xp in return Compared to dailies, each week players will be randomly assigned approximately 20 weekly challenges. Exact number not quite vinylized for launch out of a total pool of several hundred potential options. Within this group of 20, some challenges will be pulled from the easier tier, while others will be pulled from the harder tier. Ah, okay, so they're going to be kind of random. It won't be the same for everybody. So, hey, may maybe it might have one that, you know, you need to get... 10 or 20 sniper kills if you garbage with a sniper that sucks for you but for the other person who may randomly get that or maybe randomly get another one you know they may luck out or they may also not lock out uh luck out so i'm intrigued on that that sucks so still that we're not getting xp for just winning matches uh get xp with a sniper yeah that's kind of what i just said there okay look like they were kind of going over some of this too um some of the random weekly challenges stay off my yard, killing an enemy, sparring and tackling a friendly zone for the win. Win a quick play match, Spartan killer, kill enemy Spartans and Slayer, uh, war games, warrior, kill enemy Spartans, Banshee bomber. So, ah, I mean, some of these I like, but they're going to be random. So somebody could get some weird ones like complete strongholds, Complete big team battle, defeat enemy choppers in PvP, but 
the player who gets this may not be a player who wants to play those modes. A player who gets these random ones could be a player who just prefers just Slayer. You know, they would much rather have the Spartan Killer one or a back smack attack or, you know, just, oh, man, I guess I'm going to see this in, in motion, but. Some of these are tied to different modes. Like you're not going to be playing chopper on a four v four enclosed map because they don't have vehicles. So you're not going to like you will have to change how you play slightly. You will have to try out different modes and different things to actually um, go throughout the battlefield. It seems or at least the battle pass daily challenges are strictly engagement focused and seems to serve as a persistent XP drip for the past. Daily challenges come in three varieties starting with the easy, yeah, medium and hard. Okay. Uh, let's see. Along the lines of play any multiplayer match, which word XP. Okay, so initial player will have a okay large pool of daily challenges along the lines of play any multiplayer match, which word XP for playing an XP mode that operates on a trusted server, the bot arena, arena big team battle playlist. Once a player has completed all of their stage one daily challenges, they'll move into stage two, which includes a slew of dailies that now awards slightly more XP but requires playing PvP matches. Interesting. Bot arena no longer counts. And finally, once a player has exhausted all their stage two challenges for a given day, they're moving to stage three, which rewards slightly more XP for winning multiplayer matches. Okay. Now, I do like that part. I do like that part that there's stages to this. I want to, again, have to see this, how this plays um, in person each day of players. Um, allotment of daily challenges will refresh and reset back to stage one again, and the cycle continues. At launch, we anticipate that on average, it should take a player 16 to 18 hours of playing and eventually winning before they run out of daily challenges. Of course, this is going to be an area the team monitors closely and adjustments could be made if necessary. In the July tape review, it's worth noting we have some specific issues which led to players getting stuck with no way to progress, but this has been resolved. Okay. Challenge maps, the challenge, oh, challenge swap. Oh, yeah, we are, we, we've already heard about that before we've seen that. In the first flight, you can change, you can swap your challenges. Uh, remember those difficult, the difficulty tiers we mentioned for the weekly challenges? Well, using challenge swap will swap a given weekly challenge for another suitable um, weekly challenge from the same tier. Okay, that's interesting. And that, that's important is the note. So if you do use that, um, if you see like a super hard challenge and you swap it, they won't just downgrade it to like a lower tier. It'll still be it'll still be within that same tier, but it won't be that same one. So maybe a harder one, maybe like, you know, getting like 15 sniper kills. Um, now, if you swap it, you won't go down to something like get three Spartan kills or hit a Spartan in the back. You'll still have something up there higher in that same tier, but it won't. Uh, but it will be different than that sniper one. So that's that's cool to note. That is cool to note. XP boosts and XP boosts will reward double XP for any challenges while it's active for now. An XP boost is set uh, to last 30 minutes, though we're still evaluating the, value, um, the final duration from launch. Hopefully they can add those for some hours or two. Single reward vectors. Uh, one of the team's core pillars for player customization, ensuring that each unlock comes from a single consistent vector. Okay, with our player first design pillar, we want to ensure that we're respecting players' time for unlocks they've earned and purchases they make. For customization, this means ensuring that each unlock comes from a consistent vector. If you choose to purchase a battle pass, the content within that pass won't be offered via any other means. Similarly, customization content player earns through a seasonal event won't be attainable again via different avenues. The one current exception to this plan is there may be times when content that was previously allocated to a specific partnership or promotion may be released broadly at a later date. The specific example largely to address the fact that in many cases, partnership and promotions have very limited windows and may not be available to all players. Okay, okay. Here are all the ways you'll be able to acquire customization content in Halo at launch. So firstly, you got your weekly ultimate rewards. You got your seasonal uh, battle pass rewards, the free and premium tracks. You got your fracture events. Um, like we like the samurai armor, you got your special or, or seasonal events, uh, special nameplate, real war event, okay, uniform, etc. Partnership and promotional events, mega constructs, codes, or rockstar energy drinks, skill ranks, achieving a specific skill for a season will reward a unique cosmetic. Eye. Okay, I like that. Xbox Game Pass ultimate perks, cool. 
uh, in-game store purchases. So yeah, we saw that in the marketplace in Halo Infinite campaign. Some unique multiplayer cosmetics are rewarded for various accomplishments with the campaign. So yes, it looks like we will be able to get some multiplayer skins by playing the single player game or the campaign. So that's cool. And, um, you know, getting some uh beating some various accomplishments you can get that so that's cool i like that i like that a lot so we'll be able to earn some of these armors in other ways outside of just buying it or just the um the battle pass or just the seasonal events so that's cool um i'm liking that i'm liking that a lot especially that campaign i'm really liking that a lot and uh yeah looking ahead uh not sure sure there are hundreds of unique items in store for season one where more armor coatings accessories and other surprises already underway for season two and beyond all right cool 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 and um tech t preview two electric boogaloo <laughs> i'm assuming this may be the level we're gonna end up playing maybe in the uh in the halo infinite tech or at least from reading this Concept of our behemoth, a multiplayer map for Halo Infinite. So if we're not playing it in the flight, it looks like we'll probably end up seeing it in the full game. All right, tech preview goals. Um, okay, let's briefly go over that. Primary goal for these two tech preview will be to test our online services at a larger scale than ever before. That makes sense. So they're allowing a lot more people to play in game content. Um, it looks like during these two events, They'll be focusing on a social arena, which include objective modes and a new map on Sunday. Uh, bot arena, including objective modes, big team battle, debuting September 30th through October 3rd. Three modes of fragmentation, tra training mode, weapon drills, customization, battle pass, a new Halo Waypoint app and web experiences. I might have to try that app because I heard that you could customize some extra stuff on the first flight. So I might try that schedule and play sessions. All right, so weekend one, uh, Thursday evening, bill uh, becomes available for download. Thursday night, training mode and weapon drips are available, and they got the dates right there, which is cool, which is cool. Unfortunately, I won't be able to play on all of these, which sucks, but it's all good, though. It is all good. At least, at least I'll still be playing some of this. And then the weekend two, the big team uh, battle and arena cool on flight access turns on training mode and weapon drills become available all right it looks like we have some more details incoming as well guys so that's um you know a good deep dive in the blog posts kind of giving us some update on the next two halo infinite flights coming up back to back super happy super excited definitely can't wait to play some of this have some content for you guys coming out soon. And yeah, guys, if you haven't already too, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And I will be seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.